What's the best way to get crispy skin on a turkey? In this video, I'm testing out four different methods of crisping up turkey skin, and I'm ranking them from best to worst, so you can get the juiciest turkey with the crispiest skin for your holiday dinner, so let's get smoking. The challenge with turkey skin is that you often need to get up to 165 plus internal temperature in the breast in order to get extremely crispy turkey skin, and at that temperature, the turkey meat is pretty dry. I typically only like to go up to 150 max in the breast, and that is the optimal internal temperature that I find produces juicy turkeys every single time. So I've been on a mission to find out how I can get a perfectly juicy turkey at that 150 optimal internal temperature while still getting extremely crispy turkey skin. Now, in a previous video, I used baking powder and a blowtorch to get extremely crispy turkey skin, but I got a lot of comments from viewers like, Hey Steve, you should try using a heat gun, or deep frying the turkey, or simply using the broiler in your oven. So in this video, I'm testing out all of those methods so you can choose the one that works best for you. But before we get to the experiment, I'd like to thank Z-Biotics for sponsoring this video. Hate feeling miserable the day after drinks? Same. Luckily, a game-changing product called Z-Biotics is here to help. Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut where you need it the most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol, drink responsibly, and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Personally, when I have a Zbiotics before having a few drinks, I just feel more motivated and a bit less sluggish the next day, and that means I know I can enjoy a few drinks and still feel my best the next day. Thanksgiving is right around the corner, so make sure you stock up on Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic before the East, you'll be thankful you did the next day. Go to zbiotics.com forward slash smoke trails BBQ or scan the QR code on your screen right now to get 15% off your first order when you use code smoke trails BBQ at checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code so you can stay prepared no matter the time or occasion. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee, so if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com forward slash smoke trails BBQ and use code smoke trails BBQ at checkout for 15% off. Thank you Zbiotics for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get back to it. I'm starting with four utility grade turkeys. There's nothing wrong with the quality of meat for these turkeys. It just means that they are missing a wing or they might not come with giblets. It's not a big deal and they're cheaper, so they're perfect for this experiment. I'm seasoning the turkeys with some baking powder. It raises the pH of the skin, it dries out the skin, and it kind of bubbles up to create more surface area, all of which helps us get crispier skin. Now the turkeys are going into Big Beefy Luigi, my big offset smoker, and then they're going to smoke until they get up to 150 internal in the breast. By the time that happens, the thighs are usually around 165, 170 plus, which is perfect for dark meat. It needs a little bit of a higher temperature in order to reach that optimal tenderness. But for the breast meat, no higher than 150, please. That's why you've had dry turkey before, because people take it to 165 plus, and at those temperatures, the turkey meat dries out quite a bit. Now, for the first test, I'm letting the turkey rest down to around 130 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, and then I'm using this to crisp up the skin. It's a heat gun. You can get it for around 20 or 30 bucks on Amazon, so if it works, it's a pretty inexpensive option, but there's a big if. The skin is still pretty tough and leathery because we only took the breast to 150, so it needs a high heat sear to crisp up. I noticed that the skin started bubbling up when I used this heat gun, and that's a good sign. But after 20 minutes of using it, I finally reached the end of my patience and I cut into it. The breast meat was extremely juicy, but unfortunately the skin was tough to break apart, and when I tried it, it was chewy and not very crispy at all, so I don't think the heat gun is a great option unless you get an ultra powerful one and you have a lot of time on your hands. For the second test, I used the broiler in my oven on high. It's a gas oven, so the flame should theoretically crisp up the skin pretty good. I found that I needed to have the door open most of the time, and I had to rotate the bird constantly and kind of play around with it to get it not burnt in certain areas. It crisped up really unevenly, and if I had to do this at a Thanksgiving dinner with all of my friends and family around me, it would look really weird and awkward, so I'm not quite sure about this method. But in any event, when I sliced into the breast, it was super 
super juicy and it was crispier than the heat gun turkey, but it was still kind of chewy in some areas and unevenly crispy and burnt in other areas. Not the crispiest skin I've had on turkey by a long shot, but everyone has a broiler, so if it's the only option available to you, it might be a good option. For the third test, I heated some oil in a cast iron pan to 375 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and I fried the turkey breast in it. Unfortunately, my griddle was just not powerful enough to keep the oil temperature high enough, and I ended up frying it for about 15 minutes with an oil temp of around 250, which is way too low. So if I did this again, I think I'd get a gas burner and fill up the entire pot with oil and just deep fry the entire turkey. But even with this smaller amount of oil I was working with, it was still pretty sketchy and I had to be extremely careful. When I cut into the breast, it was very juicy and the skin was pretty crispy. It also tasted just kind of better from being fried in oil. So I think this could be a really good method and I actually think it could be one of the better methods, if not the best method, if you do it right. You smoke the turkey up to 150, let it rest down probably at around 120 to give a good buffer zone, and then fill up an entire pot with oil outside to 375 to 400 degrees, have a propane burner going to keep that temperature up, and then fry the entire turkey. I think you need some sort of device to actually lower the turkey into that pot, and you need to be extremely careful. Make sure there's not a lot of moisture on the skin so it doesn't bubble up a lot, but you could get really crispy skin doing it that way. That's an experiment for another day for me though. For the last test, I used my Grill Blazer sous vide gun, and this is a premium culinary blowtorch I highly recommend, but if you're looking for a budget-friendly option, you can find propane torches on Amazon for as low as like $20. So this isn't a crazy option to consider. You can see how it crisps and sizzles up the skin almost instantly, but if you're not careful, the skin can rip and tear. Not a big deal when the turkey's going to get sliced up anyway, but if you're doing this, the real art form is lightly going over the entire turkey again and again just with even strokes to crisp it up evenly so it doesn't turn black and the skin doesn't rip. When I sliced into the breast it was extremely juicy and the skin was the crispiest I got in all of these tests. It was almost like biting into a little turkey skin potato chip and then after you crunch through the outer layer you get that perfectly juicy breast meat and it was just amazing. So according to my experiment the best method is to use baking powder and a blowtorch at the end for a high temperature sear. It's the most convenient, it gives you the best results, and it's the fastest. The second best option I found is frying the turkey. I'd probably deep fry it next time as long as you can keep that temperature up to 375 to 400 for the oil temperature. Have a large burner, deep fry the entire turkey. Make sure you rest it down in temperature beforehand so you don't overcook that breast meat that you got to perfect tenderness in the oil. But I do think if you did it properly, it would probably give you the crispiest skin, but it is a little bit dangerous and it's kind of a pain in the ass to do it. Now, using your oven Oven broiler can work in a pinch, but I found it gave really unevenly crispy results and it burnt some areas and I had to have the oven door open the whole time and spin it around and it was just really awkward. So it'll work for you in a pinch, but it wouldn't be my first option. And finally, the heat gun didn't really work at all. If you're gonna bother with something like that, you might as well just get a blowtorch. But I'm interested in hearing from you guys. Do you have any ideas for getting perfectly juicy turkey meat and getting extremely crispy skin? Let me know in the comments section below one of my ideas involves maybe confeeing the turkey breast, breast side down in a pan in the smoker for the first half of the cook. And I'm hoping that will tenderize the turkey skin and help it render a little bit. And then I'll flip it over and then I can get some high temperature going over it. Maybe I'll use the blowtorch and hopefully that will give me some more crispy turkey skin. But that might be an experiment for the next holiday season. Let me know in the comments section below and until next time, happy smoking.